What's going on everybody, it's Conti here with another video. How to create a basic 2D game board using the command line interface from Python 3. We will start off by looking at how we create the 2D board. The first pair of square brackets within this two dimensional list contains another list which defines how the list will be created. In this case, the list will contain three individual data values. Each data value will be in string format and will comprise of a vertical bar on either side of three blank spaces together. The second part of this two dimensional list definition ensures that this particular list here will be created three times. This is because my intention for my 2D game board is to have the board set up with three rows and three columns as we saw in the initial demonstration. If I were to output the variable board using the print command you can see that all three of these lists have been output on a single row and each of the data values with the vertical bars are separated with commas which is what we don't want for our display. So how can we get rid of these commas and how can we display each list of three blank spaces in between vertical bars on different rows? I have now moved the board variable into an updated algorithm of this particular program. To the right in the console you can see the updated grid without any commas or square brackets at the end of each list and the presentation is much better. Underneath are instructions which tells the end user what buttons to press in order to move the A character around on the grid. W for up, S for down, A for left and D for right. In order to determine where the character will be positioned on the grid, we require two coordinates, X and Y. Note how even though the A character is located in the second column and the second row, the number 1 has been used for character X and also character Y. This is because in the Python programming language, to reference a particular part of a list, you need to subtract 1. So the first item in any list in Python will be referred to as 0, not 1. And therefore, in order to refer to the second part, we use the number 1. If I wanted to move the A to the right here in the middle row, I keep X which represents the row number as the same as 1 as I want to keep it in the second row, however I want A to appear in the third column and therefore I change the Y coordinate to 2. And when I run the program again, the A is positioned on the far right here. The A is positioned to the right on the grid. For now though I will position the A in the middle of the grid. The appearance of the character is determined by this variable here, character position. In between the vertical bars I have a space on either side of the A and this will be written into the section where the character will be positioned. The actual position itself is determined using these coordinates character X and character Y which I previously defined on lines 2 and 3 and this is done down on line 9 where I refer to the variable name board and in the first set of brackets I have the row number determined by the X coordinates followed by the column number in the second set of square brackets which is saved in the character Y variable and this particular position on the board will be the value stored within the character position variable which in this case here is the A in between the vertical bars. What if you wanted the end user to have multiple turns at moving the character A on this two dimensional board? Scrolling down to line 11 I have created a while loop while true which will basically continue to run the following instructions from lines 12 to 40 until the end user stops the program. The first thing that will happen in this loop is that the 
2D board will be printed on screen on the console, followed by the instructions for the end user about what to press in order to move character A. Once that occurs, then the end user will be prompted for an input, which will be stored in the variable direction. In this case here, to test the program, what I'm going to do is enter a capital W and press enter. And as you can see on the next printed grid here, the character A has moved from the center, from the second row up to the first row and remains in the center. This is made possible from the conditional statement from lines 25 to 40. What happens in this particular section from lines 25 to 28 is that the program will check the value stored in the variable direction to see whether it's the equivalent of the string value a capital W which is also what I typed here. What happens after that on line 26 is that the position that the A is currently in is made blank in preparation for the change of location and what needs to be done in order to move A on the grid is that the coordinates need to be modified. In this case here since we want to move the A back to the first list which is the first row on top we have to subtract one from character x once this particular coordinate variable has been updated what happens then is that the board variable is called again and the updated x coordinate is placed within the first set of square brackets to give the a character a new location and the same is done for s a and D, whether you're moving down, left or right. Bear in mind if we are moving down and we want to move to a further list, we need to increment character X this time. The same occurs for moving horizontally. To move left, we decrement character Y by one and in order to move right, we increment character Y by one. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that video was useful to you. To support this channel, please like and subscribe. Join me soon for another video. Take care.